Hey friend, welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be discussing de-essing during mastering. We're going to be going over some useful techniques for performing de-essing during mastering, so stick around for the full video. But first, if this is a topic you find interesting, I'd highly recommend looking into the blog post that's associated with this video. You can find the link for that in the description box below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, you can send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you have to do is set up this short account, upload the song, and we will do the rest. So de-essing and mastering music aren't often spoken about in the same sentence, but on occasion, de-essing during the mastering process is needed. When this is the case, it's best to know how to handle excessive sibilance in a master. Like most things in audio production, certain techniques and understandings can be implemented to best fix this particular issue. Now, as you can imagine, if excessive sibilance isn't handled during the mastering process, it can become exacerbated by the processing that occurs during mastering. De-essing during mastering should occur before other forms of processing, and should definitely occur before any additive forms of processing that may amplify sibilance. The reason being, other forms of processing which amplify sibilance will make the de-essing process that much more difficult. Additionally, this de-essing will be much more noticeable, as whatever plugin or processor you use will have to work harder. With that in mind, you want to minimize the effect of your de-essing. You don't want the processing to make a noticeable impact on your master. In other words, the goal of de-essing during mastering is to be as transparent and uh, undetectable as possible. If your de-essing can be heard, be it from noticeable equalization or excessive compression, then it hasn't been performed correctly. If you need to perform de-essing during mastering, a great option is to use a mid-side equalizer to attenuate the mid-channel and accentuate or amplify the side channel. By doing this, you'll be cutting out on some of that sibilance in addition to masking sibilance-based frequencies. Again, this processing is happening first before any other forms of processing that could potentially amplify sibilance frequencies. So let's look at how to do this in greater detail so that we can understand better. Step one, insert your mid-side capable equalizer as the first plugin in your signal chain. For this example, we'll be using the FabFilter Pro-Q3, but use any EQ plugin that you like, so long as it can separate the stereo signal into mid and side channels. Step two, enable the mid-side functionality of the plugin. Now this is gonna look different from plugin to plugin. For the FabFilter Pro-Q3, I'll need to create the band and then determine which channel it's affecting. Step three, using a mid-channel band, listen critically to determine where the sibilance frequencies are. You can use an isolate function to help you set the appropriate cue and to properly identify the frequencies that are causing this issue. Now, if you're in doubt, sibilance will often cause a frequency spike when sung, so you should be able to notice this spike with a frequency analyzer. Step four, with this mid-channel band over the appropriate frequencies, attenuate those frequencies no more than 1.5 to 2 dB. Step five, Next, create a band on the side channel with the same cue as the mid channel. Situate this band right below the frequencies that you just attenuated with the mid band, so about 10 hertz below the center frequency of the band that you just attenuated. Now, step six, amplify the side channel band no more than 1.5 dB to 2 dB. Make any adjustments or corrections as needed. By amplifying the mid-channel, we're lowering the amplitude of sibilance-based frequencies. This may be noticeable, but by amplifying the side channel near the same range, we're reintroducing that frequency on the side image where the sibilance is not occupying. Now, this means that the instrumentation in the side image will replace what was attenuated in the mid-image. Additionally, by amplifying the side image right below the center frequency of the mid-band, we're using the power of masking or phase cancellation to cover up that centered frequency. Now this means that the sibilance is being canceled out by louder instrumentation in the similar frequency range. Next, let's look into how you can use a multiband compressor for de-essing during mastering. Step one, insert your multiband compressor plugin into your signal chain, ideally first or second. Uh, now don't use a stereo compressor as it's gonna compress uniformly across the entire frequency spectrum. In this case, we only wanna compress specific frequencies. Step two, find the frequencies that you wanna compress. The easiest way to do this is to use an isolate function to hear only a single band. Now keep refining your frequency band selection until you find it as accurate as possible. This band will most likely be situated somewhere between 5 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz. Step three, set a modest ratio. Usually no higher than two to one, but a higher one can be used in certain circumstances if your sibilance is particularly strong. 
Now lower your threshold until you notice that the compressor is exclusively or almost exclusively compressing when the S sound or a similar sibilance is being sung. Step four, alter your attack and release times to best compress the sibilance. Now typically a shorter attack and shorter release time will work well. This means that the compressor will begin working right when the transient of the sibilance begins in turn compressing it more adequately. Step five, closely monitor your gain reduction meter to ensure that you're not compressing your signal excessively or in a noticeable way. Step six, if heavier compression was needed or this compression made a noticeable change to the balance of the frequency spectrum, gradually increase the makeup gain until the balance has been restored. Now, compression typically isn't as noticeable as equalization as it only attenuates the signal at specific points. That being said, getting your compressor to compress at the right time and for the right amount can be a challenge. Adjust your setting until you find that your sibilance is being adequately compressed and that irrelevant signals aren't being compressed. Now, lastly, let's cover de-essing during mastering with an actual de-essing plugin. Now, although not all de-essers are going to be ideal, as many were designed to be used during mixing and not during the mastering process, their implementation is still better than allowing sibilance to become excessive. Now, although they're kind of rare, some plugins have been designed specifically for de-essing during the mastering process. The one that we've used and we've found very useful is the uh, SoftTube Weiss de-esser. Now, similar to a multi-band compressor, the Weiss de-ess has two bands of compression that are set to frequencies specific to sibilance. Now, these bands are adjustable in terms of their typical compressor settings, be it attack, release, threshold, range, and so on. But what helps and allows for transparency is the ability to change the bandwidth of the compression. Now you can alter between a band, notch, and a high pass filter to determine how much of the band that you're affecting with this compression. Now between the two bands you can easily and transparently address the sibilance in your master. The range function allows you to ensure that you're capturing the sibilance by uh, having a low enough threshold, but to ensure only a specific amount is compressed. So if you're finding that the two techniques presented previously aren't controlling sibilance in a way that you find transparent or accurate, you can use this plugin or a similar plugin to attenuate your sibilance in your master. So these are some of our techniques for DSing when mastering, but what do you think? Is there a technique that you use that we didn't cover here? If so, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also again, definitely check out the blog post where you can find a lot more information on this topic and others like it. There's a link in the description box below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you have to do is set up this account, upload the song, and we will do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you like this video and you want to see more like it. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release new videos every week and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or you can leave a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, you can send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.